Magandang araw, ako po si Sir Ariel, ang Alts Lover ng EdTech Unit. Narito po ako para sa isang napakagandang balida at upang magpaalala na ang kinabukasan ay mas gaganda at uulad kung ang lahat ay patuloy na mag-aaral. Sa edukasyon sa ating bansa, tiyak na walang maiiwanan sa pag-abot ng mga pangarap. Kaya naman ang Department of Education ICTS Educational Technology Unit at Alternative Learning System Task Force ay nagtutulungan sa pagkakaroon ng ALS Tech Empowerment Program upang maihatid ang excellent quality education sa ating mga ALS learner and teachers. To easily deliver the lessons from the modules and other references, we will provide tablet PC as part of the DepEd Computerization Program to all ALS teachers and orientation on the use of these packages. To deepen the pedagogical use of information and communications and technology in delivering instructions, there are training workshops on the use and curation of Open Educational Resources or OER, Google and Microsoft Productivity Tools, creation of video lessons using PowerPoint presentations and KineMaster, and on ebook or e-magazine development. To create an avenue for remedial lessons that is open to all learners, teachers, and parents, we will have the e to lie free online tutorial and mobile e to lie where we will visit remote schools to feature the best practices of our ALS teachers and learners. Sa mga out-of-school youth and adult, laging tatandaan na may pag-asa upang makapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral. May ALS para sa inyo. Ang edukasyon ay para sa lahat. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad. Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Elaine Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating e online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Okay, ayan. So, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. At uh, tayo na naman po ay magsasama-sama sa uh, oras na ito sa loob ng apat na po hanggang anim na pong minuto o isang oras uh, para sa ating uh, itulay online tutorial for Senior High School Practical Research 2. At... Uh, Ito ang yung tutor para sa oras na ito, Tutor Ronald. At sa araw na ito, tayo ay nasa ikalimang linggo ng ating uh, ikaapat na quarter ng kasalukuyang school year. At uh, mula sa ating Most Essential Learning Competencies Guide, ang ating content standard na pag-aaralan sa araw na ito ay tungkol sa data processing, organizing, and analysis. Ngunit uh, para sa uh, oras na ito, tayo ay uh, magpo-focus sa data organizing. Okay? Um, kung 
natatandaan nyo nung nakarang linggo ang ating tinalakay tungkol sa data collection. At syempre, pagkatapos ng data collection, uh, ang susunod na step sa ating research in terms of, in relation to our data is uh, to present and interpret data. And for our objective, na kinuha natin mula sa ating most essential learning competencies guide, um, you are expected to present and interpret data in tabular or graphical forms. So data presentation ang ating um, pag-aaralan sa oras na ito. At uh, balikan muna natin ang ating pinag-aaralan noong nakarang linggo. Week 4. Uh, again, ang uh, ating pong pinag-aralan noong nakaraan na linggo ay tungkol sa data collection process. No? So, let's uh, answer the following questions by choosing the letter of the correct answer to the following items. So, all you have to do is to choose the letter if you are tuning in right now or uh, nakatuto kayo, nanonood, maaari kayong um, mag-participate sa ating online tutorial by answering, by typing in your uh, letter of answer sa ating comment box. So, fill in the blanks for number one. If a researcher works at a cafeteria and observes the waiters, this is an example of blank. A, observation, B, interview, C, focus group, or D, survey. So what uh, data collection technique um, applicable sa ating situation? Again, if a researcher works at a cafeteria and observes the waiters, this is an example of blank. Observation, A, interview, B, focus group, C, or uh, survey letter D. So, ang tama pong sagot sa ating number one ay letter A, observation. So, observation po ang tamang um, data collection technique na ginamit ng researcher kasi nag-observe siya sa kanyang participants no sa isang lugar sa kapit, sa cafeteria. Number 2. If a researcher asks questions from a list and talks with the respondent face to face or through the telephone to gather information, the method used is so, ano naman pong data collection method ang ginamit no? sa ating situation? If a researcher asks questions from a list and talks with the respondent face-to-face -face or through the telephone or pwede rin po sa panahon ngayon video conference, video call, no? so kakausapin ng researcher ang respondent whether face-to-face -face or virtually. So, anong tawag sa data collection method or technique? Is it A, observation, B, interview, C, questionnaire, or D, survey? Ang tama sagot sa ating number two ay walang iba kundi Ayan, interview. No? So, meron questions, listahan ang mga questions, and then babasahin yung questions sa respondent, sa harap ng respond, uh, respondent. Okay? So, interview ang tawag to. Number three. Ayan. Focus group na sabi ni Juliet Songgaben. Um, number three, blank contains the list of questions and answer options that the researcher will read to the respondent. So what uh, type of data collection uh, is it? Again, uh, blank contains the list of questions and answer options that the researcher 
will read to the respondents. So, meron ding questions, no? Uh, ito yung ginamit kanina sa number two nung, nung uh, researcher sa, sa pagkuha niya ng uh, data, no? Yung, ka, yung kausap yung uh, respondent. So, anong tawag dito sa listahan ng mga tanong at Siyempre, meron doon sagot. Is it A, observation checklist? B, interview guide? C, questionnaire? Or D, sample survey? Si ang tamang sagot po sa ating uh, ikatlong item ay, ayan, letter B, interview guide. No? So, interview guide contains the list of questions and answer options that the researcher will read to the respondent. Okay, number four. Which of the following requires survey? Or alin sa mga ito ang type of survey? Is it A, census? B, administrative data? C, tracer studies? Or D, all of the above. So, alin po kaya ang type of survey or ginagamitan ng survey? The correct answer for number four is D, all of the above. Yes, lahat po ng choices ay ginagamitan ng survey or they are themselves as uh, types of survey. Okay? Next, number five. This is our last item for our review sa ating uh, discussion last, uh, last week. No? So number five, a blank questionnaire has gone through the process of psychometric validation has been piloted and revised. So what type of questionnaire is it? Uh, uh, it has gone through the process of psychometric Validation has been piloted and revised. Is it researcher made, teacher made, standardized, or computerized? So number five, it should be teacher made. Okay? So number five, ang tawang sagot sa ating number five ay, ayan, lang. Standardized. So, a standardized questionnaire has gone through the process of psychometric validation, has been piloted and revised. So, it's a standardized questionnaire. And ngayon, atin ng pag-aralan ng ating um, topic or lesson para sa oras nito which is presenting and interpreting data in tabular and graphical form. So, uh, nung nakaraling ko, pinag-aralan natin ang pag-collecta, pag-gather ng, uh, pag ng data. No? So, ngayon, uh, assuming na meron na tayong data or kung meron na talaga kayong data, so, ang sunod natin gagawin ay i-present ang data. No? in either tabular or graphical form. Bakit kailangan nating um, gumamit ng tables and graphics or bakit kailangan ito i-present in tabular and graphical form? Bakit hindi na lang puro uh, text na lang or paragraph form na lang? No? Bakit nga ba? Okay, malalaman natin yan sa ating mga susunod na slides and uh, Explanations and discussions. Okay. So, the data presentation has three common techniques. You know? Three common techniques. Okay. Uh, these three techniques, common techniques, are textual presentation, tabular presentation, and graphical presentation. So these are the three common techniques in presenting uh, data. So let's discuss each um, 
technique. One is, uh, first is the textual presentations. No? Textual presentations use words, statements, or paragraphs with numerals, numbers, or measurements to describe data. They can be used independently to describe the data when there are very few quantities or numbers. Okay. Um, textual presentation is um, a technique where the researcher just use words, statements, or paragraphs. No, of course, meron ding, although it's a text, meron ding numerals or numbers, no, uh, or measurements to describe data. Again, kung gumamit ka ng textual presentation, um, it uh, the presentation itself no, can stand on its own or independently without uh, any accompanying um, other presentations like uh, graphical or tabular. So, kahit textual presentations lang, pwede na siyang uh, kumbaga, sufficient na siya to describe your data. Again, you use textual presentation when you have very few quantities or numbers, okay? For example, a textual presentation. Uh, let me read. There are 42,036 barangays in the Philippines. The largest barangay in terms of population size is Barangay 176 in Caloocan City with 247,000 persons. It is followed by Commonwealth in Quezon City, 198,285, and Batasan Hills in Quezon City, 161,409. Twelve other barangays posted a population size of more than 100,000 persons. So this uh, textual presentation of the data about the um, barangays, no? And the largest uh, barangays in terms of population size is from the PSA. Uh, .gov .ph. Uh, I do not know kung anong year, anong year ito. At sa tingin ko, uh, hindi naman siguro nagbabago ang number of uh, barangays no, sa Philippines. Unless merong bagong ordinansa o patas. Pero uh, malimit lang naman madagdagan or mabawasan ang numbers of barangas. But anyway, uh, this is an example of textual presentation. So, so in paragraph form, my words, at the same time, my numbers. No? So ang data mo is uh, very, uh, very few lang ang data. So you only have uh, how many? Um, Caloocan City, Quezon City, uh, three barangays only. No? And then um, the others perhaps are not are not really important. I mean, the twelve other barangays are not important. So, yung tatlong top three largest barangay in uh, barangays in terms of population size ang um, present lang no sa textual presentation. So, yan. Uh, pwede nyo itong gamitin sa inyong research, no? Kung, again, you only have very few uh, numerical data for your research. Next, let's proceed to the next common type of uh, data presentation, which is tabular presentation. So, tabular presentations present clear and organized data, no? And it includes the following. It includes the following uh, parts, okay? To uh, table number and title, which are placed above the table. Now, the title is usually written after the table number. So, the table number, so let's say, mamaya meron tayong example yan. So, nasa taas ng table. Next, caption subhead refers to columns and rows. No? So, merong mga subhead 
yung columns and rows. And then the body contains all the data under each subhead or columns and rows. And of course, do not forget the source, which indicates if the data is secondary and, and uh, the source should be acknowledged. Okay? So, kung may pinagkunan kayo ng source, kung ba hindi kayo mismo yung nag-collect ng data, no? Then you have to include the source. Like, pares kanina, yung sa textual presentation, it was taken from psa.gov.ph. Okay? Next. Ayan. So, this is our example of a tabular presentation of data. So, again, on top, you have the title and the table number. So, table number one. No? So, if you have several tables in your research, in your data presentation of your research, you have to, uh, of course, number it, uh, number your tables, of course, from one, uh, etc. No, table one, table two, table three. So, again, it's on the top of your table. So, the table number one, the title is Ages of individuals in various employment sectors all right and then you have how many columns you have four columns all right and then uh rows the first row is contains your subhead and also the first uh column also uh contains the subhead for the column uh so for the employment sector column uh, you have agriculture, education, health, law, manufacturing, retail, and others. And then uh, you have the second column, 18, 25 age group. Then 26, 35 age group. Third column and fourth column, 36 to 45 age group. And then, of course, you have the data for each subhead. Okay? So, ano ibig sabihin? So, sa agriculture sector, Merong tatlong individuals under the age group of 18 to 25. So, merong walo na individuals sa 26 to 35 age group and merong 12 individuals aged 36 to 45 ang nagtatrabaho sa agriculture. Okay? So, yan po ang ating example sa uh, tabular data presentation. Next. Here's another tabular presentation, but this time with textual analysis. With textual analysis. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang table ang iperpresent niyo sa uh, research paper. No? Meron din kayong uh, brief analysis about a textual analysis about the table you presented. So, for example, of course, dahil uh, second table na to, so uh, we mark it table two. Okay, table two. And the title is Profile of Students According to Gender. All right, so you have three columns. First column is the gen uh, for gender, frequency, second column, third column, percentage. All right, then you have male, 120 um, students, which accounts for 40% of the total population. And then um, 180 uh, female which accounts for 60% of the total um, students, total number of students. No? So again, total number of students, 300. So that's 100%. So the short textual analysis is among 300 respondents, 120 or 40% are males and 180 or 60% are females. So yan po ang uh, example ng tabular presentation with textual analysis. So, pinagsamang tabular presentation and textual presentation. Here's another example of tabular uh, presentation with textual analysis. So, our table now is table number 
three, and the title is Profile of Students According to Grade Level. Again, you have three columns, no? and then the rows. You have, of course, on the top row, uh, you have the subhead for the columns, and then the second up to the last row, you have uh, the grade levels, and of course, the total uh, celestial. So, ilan nga ba ang grade 7? 60. So, 20% sa total uh, number of students. And eight, grade 8, 54, 18%, and so on. Okay? Now, we, your textual analysis will be of the service 300 respondents, 60 or 20% are in grade 7, 54, 18% uh, are, are in grade 8, 51 or 17% are grade 9, and 45 or 15% are in grade 10. Daming lumalabas. Ayan. Uh, this constitutes enrollment in junior high school. Enrollees in entering senior high school in grade 11 constitutes 90 or 30 percent of the total population. By the way, our example here is just an example of the analysis, no, a textual analysis of the uh, table above. You can also you can actually make your own textual analysis based on the table. So, etong ating textual analysis ay example lamang yam. There are many ways to present your textual analysis, no? Na ang data ay ganun pa rin. Maybe you can start with um, the highest grade 7. It's good. Uh, sabagay, naka-arrange naman siya from highest to lowest, no? Maybe you can also um, mention about the, the difference no, uh, between uh, grade levels no, and also junior high school and senior high school. No, you can also mention kung ilan ang total percentage sa junior high school as compared to the total percentage sa uh, senior high school na 30%. Now, bakit wala wala bakit kaya walang grade 12? Siguro bagong bago pa lang tong school na to na nag-offer ng uh, senior high school kaya grade 11 pa lang ang kanilang um uh, profile of students or up to grade 11 pa lang. Okay? So, that's another example of our data presentation using tabular presentation uh, with textual analysis. Okay? Kaya magandang hapon, uh, Dave and uh, Rochelle. Uh, let's see. What's next? Yeah, next uh, common type or technique of data presentation is graphical methods of presenting data or graphical presentation. So, what is a graph? By the way, itong ating uh, discussion or uh, topic I, I'm sure pinag-aralan to sa ibang subject like sa math, no? Sa English uh Sure din ako na pinag-aralan dito. This is uh, nasa ano to, nasa linear and non-linear text. Mm -mm. Ang, you know, ang tables, graphs, and other graphic organizers. Alright, so what is a graph or chart? Um, a graph or a chart portrays the visual presentation of data using symbols such as lines, dots, bars, or slices. It depicts the trend of a certain set of measurements or shows comparison between two or more sets of data or quantities. And just like a table, a graph also 
has parts like the X and the Y axis. It also has a heading. And of course, the units are included. It's or yung um, numbers, no? numerical data. And of course, it has figure number. Uh, kanina sa table, we call it uh, table number. For graphs, uh, we, call, uh, we call them figures, no? figure one, figure two. And um, after the figure number, the title and these are usually placed below the figure a table above the table ang sa graph or chart the figure number and title are usually placed below the figure okay okay next so we have one of the types of graphs uh, is what they call a line graph. A line graph is a graphical presentation of data that shows a continuous change or trend. It may show an ascending or a descending trend. So, ayan. So, you have here the X and the Y axis. No? And then you have the units or the numbers, yung data natin here. And the figure number, figure number one. And you have the title, rates of unemployment, 2001, 2010. And you have the data source. It's, uh, the data is from the National Statistics Office or NSO. Okay. Um, Here's a short textual analysis about the figure. And it says here, the figure shows that during the years 2001-2004, the rates of unemployment were over 11%. So, tama nga naman, over 11%. And then, the decline came in 2005. So, there was a negative 4% decline, a small decline in 2006 to 2007. Kasi nga, small decline, ayan, uh, from 8 to 7.3, 0.7% decline. Uh, and unemployment rates were almost the same in 2008 to 2009. Kasi nga, 7.3, 7.4, 7.5, 7.4 um, ang difference. Uh, I mean, ang... Um, employment rates in 2008 to 2000 is almost the same. So that's an example of our line graph. So uh, medyo familiar tayo dito, no? Now, kung hindi nyo pa alam kung paano uh, gumawa ng uh, ano tawag nito? Ng line graph. Actually, uh, sa word, mag-insert lang siya. Insert, uh, meron kayo dong choices na uh, chart. So, of course, insert chart. No? Nipipili kayo kung anong uh, insert nyo. Kung line graph ba or other types of uh, graphs or charts. Okay? Next. Next. We also have what we call a double line graph. Or double line graph which has two lines connecting uh, points to show continuous change in the data over time, okay? Uh, line graph, double line graph. Um, if you notice, has two lines, no? Bakit nga ba, uh, or usually saan ginagamit ang ang double line graph. It is to show uh, comparison. Okay? To show comparison of data of two uh, variables or um, two variables or uh, constructs in your research. Like for example here you have um, gender for the constructs male and female. Okay, so to show the comparison in one table, so you use double line graph. Okay, so what's the title of our double line graph? 
So it's a labor labor force participation 2005-2013, and uh, this is already figure number two. We have a source which is from the National Statistics Office. So what does the uh, figure sh uh, show? It shows the labor force participation for females from 2005-2013 range from 48.2 to 49.8 while that of the females range from 78.1 to 79.8 okay 78.1 to 79.8 all right so that's our example for double line graph next next type of graph or chart uh, that we can use for our graphical presentation uh, of our uh, data is a bar graph or bar chart, which uses bars to compare categories of data. Um, a bar graph can be vertical or horizontal. Okay, vertical yung nakatayo, horizontal yung nakahigang bar graph. Okay. So a vertical bar graph is best used in comparing means or percentages between distinct categories. Okay. Uh, whereas ang, ang horizontal bar graph naman ay uh, maaaring magkaroon ng limang categories and it is used to uh, to show a trend, parang ano siya, parang line graph, although ang gamit niya is uh, bar instead of lines, okay? Our example here, uh, which is already figure number three, is titled Reasons Why People Travel Abroad, no? reasons why people travel abroad so what are the reasons you have vis uh, visit friends relatives or leisure tourism work work related personal or business uh, you have conferences seminars and petitions by relatives so these are the reasons why people travel abroad so how many uh, responded that they travel abroad because they want to visit friends and relatives there were 26 so what's the so that's the highest number of um, reason no the highest uh, that's the reason with the highest number of um, respondents okay while with uh, the list uh, with the the least reason or the reason the reason with the least number of uh, respondents is a petition by relatives no there are only seven seven respondents all right next to visit friends and relatives you have a uh, work related so people travel abroad for the reason that they uh, um, they are uh, working or it's uh, business related travel all right so 26 uh, 25 I mean 25 okay um, let's now proceed to another type of bar graph which is a double bar graph okay double bar graph Kanina meron tayong double line graph, di ba? So, syempre meron rin tayong double bar graph to show comparison of two or more uh, two or more characteristics. Okay? Or two or more um, variables in your research study. So, what's the title of our um figure which is figure number four or the bar graph double bar graph it's a uh, basic literacy rates 
Philippines, 1990-2008. The data source is from pcw.gov.ph. Okay. Kaligyan muna natin na kanina. Sorry. Ayan. So, what does the figure show? What does it uh, illustrate about basic literacy rates between female and male? So, you have here the legend or the key uh, for the bars. Uh, and the bars are color-coded. The blue bars are for female and the red bars are for male. So, what does it uh, what does the uh, figure tell us about the basic literacy rates between male and female in uh, 1990 to 2008? Sino ang may mataas na basic literacy rates? No, first question. So you have um, female, di ba? You have 94, 92. 0.390 as compared to 86.8 and then 96.1 um, 95.1 sa male. So, sa 1990 lang medyo mababa ang literacy rate, basic literacy rate ng female. No? But the other years, 1994, 2000, 2003, 2008, uh, female ang may pinaka ang may mas mataas na basic literacy rates. So noong 1990 uh, male ang may mataas sa basic literacy rates and then big uh, bumaba nang bumaba hanggang 2008, no? Mas mababa pinakamababa noong 2003 ang parehas na gender 90.4 sa female and 86.8 sa male. So ang importanteng tanong dito is uh, if this is uh, your research is bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba ganito ang trend, no? Or bakit nga ba bumaba noong 2003, no? So bakit nga ba mas mataas ang male noong 1990 at bigla silang bumaba nang bumaba nung mga sumunod na taon. Okay? So, magandang uh, suriin yan at i-analyze at sa research at malaman no, ang mga sagot sa bakit na tanong. Okay. Next, we have a chart or circle graph which is usually used to show uh, how parts of a whole compared to each other and to the whole. So, meron kang slices, no? slices of the pie. Okay? Uh, our figure or circle graph is about the 2013 Comelec registrants by age group. Okay? By age group. And uh, this is already figure number five. The source of our data is from PSA and Comelec. So 2013 pa tong, uh, data na to. Um, siguro mas marami na ngayon, no? Ngayong taon, especially ngayong taon. Dahil next year, um, ge-election na naman. So I'm sure marami ng registrants nagpa-register sa Comelec para sa darating na election sa susunod na taon. Okay. So, um, we have here uh, colors as our legend for uh, the slices of the pie. So, you have the blue one is for 18 to 21. No? And then 22 to 30, ang red. Uh, 40 to 48, ang yellow. 49 to 59, ang light blue. And 60 above, ang green. No? 60 above. So these are age range or age group. No? So kung titignan natin ang... Pinakamalaki ay 19% ang 
uh, sorry, yung gray, no? Na 31 to 39. So, ibig sabihin, noong 2013, mas ang pinakamaraming nagparegister na age group ay age 31 to 39. So, ang senior high school, nasa age group sila na 18 to 21, no? So, I'm sure ang iba sa inyo, ang iba sa ating mga senior high school, lalo na ang grade 12, na 18 na ay nag uh, register na at uh, sila ay pwede nang bumoto sa ating susunod na halala. So, kung hindi pa kayo napaparegister, magparegister na kayo at nang uh, ma-exercise ninyo ang inyong karapatan sa pagboto. Okay, so we have here a, a a table next to our pie chart just to give us the exact data, hindi lang yung percentage, no? exact data or number of registrants per age group. No? So nasa uh, second uh, column ang ating uh, numbers or data for the number of registrants. So, millions, no? Millions ang ating number of registrants. Like for example, sa H group na 18 to 21, we have 9,505,241 number of registrants. And this is in the whole Philippines, in the whole country. Now, if you add all the percentages, no from 18 21 age group up to 60 above it will total to 100% kasi ang total ng pi i or circle i dapat 100% okay so 100% so ang ang bawat uh, slice ng pi ay magko-correspond uh, if you total them into 100% or the total number of the whole circle or graph. Okay? So that's our pie chart or circle graph. And that's basically our uh, discussion for this afternoon. Now, before we go to the next slide, uh, for just a few minutes, or maybe uh, you can um, take this down in your notebooks. So take a look back and remember the things you learn you know, about different techniques in presenting and interpreting data. So what, uh, what have you realized? What, uh, um, what have you synthesized? So, write them down para uh, hindi ninyo makalimutan. Alright? So, what have you learned in short? Now, let's go to our assessment. No? Uh, just to test your knowledge of or memory. No? Kung, uh, and understanding, syempre, sa ating uh, discussion a while ago. So, uh, fill in the blanks or complete the statement. Number one, blank use word statements or paragraphs with numerals, numbers, or measurements to describe data. Is it A, textual presentations, B, tabular presentations, C, graphical presentations, or D, nonlinear presentations? Ano nga kaya ang... Um, Sagot sa number one, is it again textual presentations, B, tabular presentations, or C, graphical presentations, or D, nonlinear presentations? So the correct answer is A, textual presentations. No, sexual, textual presentations, use words, statements, or Paragraphs with numerals, numbers, or measurements to describe data. Okay, next. Blank present clear and organized data in rows and columns. Is it the uh, same choices? Textual presentations, tabular presentations, graphical presentations, or nonlinear presentations? Ano nga kaya? 
All right, our correct answer is the tabular presentations. So, uh, the clue here are the words rows and columns, no? rows and columns. Number three, blank illustrate data using symbols such as lines, dots, bars, and slices. A textual presentation, tabular, graphical, or non-linear presentations. The correct answer is ayan, letter C, graphical presentations. Number four, blank is usually used to show how parts of a whole compare to each other and to the whole. Our correct answer for number four is letter B, circle graph or uh, pie chart. Okay, circle graph or pie chart. And finally, number five, blank is a graphical presentation of data that shows a continuous change or trend. It may show an ascending or descending trend. Okay. Is it a bar graph, B circle graph, C histogram, or D line graph? Our answer is line graph. Yeah. By the way, histogram is also an example of um, example of a graphical presentation. Para siyang bar graph, only na walang, ang itsura niya is wala siyang uh, spaces in between bars. Dikit-dikit. No? Dikit-dikit yung, yung bars. Histogram. Uh, hindi siya kasama sa common techniques no, in uh, presenting data. It's another technique or way to uh, present data, okay, to present and interpret data. So there you go. We have our first assessment and, of course, for application of what we discuss and what you've learned in today's uh, discussion. So... Uh, after knowing the different techniques in presenting and interpreting data, present and interpret in tabular or graphical forms the data you collected for your own research project for practical research too. Now, nasa sa inyo yan kung ano ang uh, gagamitin nyo. Is it tabular, graphical, or rendering textual? No? So, depende sa data na meron kayo. So, piliin ang pinaka-appropriate uh, pinaka -appropriate na presentation of data. Kasi useless ang presentation of data kung hindi akma, hindi appropriate yung uh, technique na ginamit mo. Like, for example, gumamit ka ng tabular, mas maganda naman palang uh, presensya using graphs. So, parang... Um, less points, hindi hindi ma appreciate no yung data data presentation. So uh, choose carefully the most appropriate uh, technique of presenting your data. Again, pwede kayong pumili ng uh, different types of graph uh, graphs. No, in if if you opt to if you opt to choose graphical presentations, no, you have line graph, uh, circle graph, or uh, bar graph. Of course, tables, madalila and tables. All right, just remember the parts, no, of the tables and the graphs or figures that you will use in your research. And with that, good luck sa inyong data presentation. And again, this is my reference for my presentation, the book by Prieto Naval and Carey, Practical Research 2 for Senior High School, published in 2017 by Lorimar, Lorimar Publishing Incorporated. And with that, I say thank you. Maraming salamat. Daghang salamat sa atong mga bisayang kaigsuunan. And damo nga salamat sa 
ating kapatid na mga kapatid na waray. Again, uh, this is your tutor for Senior High School Practical Research 2, Tutor Ronald. Up next, or maybe uh, already streaming now sa Facebook and YouTube, Tutor Reveille for Statistics and Probability. See you again next week. Kita-kita muli tayo, same time for PM and same Facebook page and YouTube channel.